We're good. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us again. I mean, this is uh, this has been awesome so far. I have uh, Renaud with me with today. He's what's up, guys? Know, yeah, we've been trying to do this for a while. Even like just hang yes. out. I mean, we uh, we know each other for a long time, but just hanging out, I mean, like one or one one time last year finally. So yeah, I'm, it's I'm been crazy. Excited. Yeah, I'm very excited to do this and just have a chance to talk to you a little bit more. Thanks, thanks for yeah. doing this. You're welcome, man. Pleasure is mine. I'm super honored to be here. Like, so thank you so much for reaching out. Sorry for the like super late notice this morning and everything, but like, I'm super glad that we made it work. <laughs> that was my bad. Yeah, right. Like, we have been knowing each other online for like ever, and uh, you have been a source of inspiration for me forever. So it's like it's really humbling to be here today. So thank you again. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. And you've been killing for the past, you know, five to ten years. Like, how long you've been at Blizzard? At Blizzard, oh my god, uh, I think I just crossed 11 years at Blizzard. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know it was that long. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I started like, you know, like with all the old crew, you know, Mark Brunet and like, yep. you know, Vadim was there and like Pure for the people who remember that guy. Uh, amazing. I mean, and Arnold saying, yeah, like I was actually thinking about that the other day. And it's like Arnold and I have been working together for like a, a decade now, which is insane. Uh, yeah. Arnold saying for the people who don't know uh, that person is basically the guy behind Overwatch. Like, like he's really the, the mind, the creative mind behind Overwatch when it comes to the character's design and everything. Like, without him, we just wouldn't have Overwatch. So, yeah, it's been a blessing. That's that's awesome. Did you, what, what did you guys work together before? What was what title? Well, so so the, the way that it started is that we actually both started on, on Project Titan, which was the, the previous project, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he joined, I think, a few months after I did. And uh, I think he basically like revamped almost the art direction on, on, on that thing. Like he came he came on as a concept audit and he was like, oh yeah, okay, I'm just gonna sketch a few things. And we were like, can I just model this for the rest of my life? I'm, I'm good, I'm good, this is good, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> and, and it's been like that ever since, you know, like he just has such a unique style and like such a cool way yeah. to portray ideas and like his communication skills are also super good whenever it comes to like explaining what he, what he means by some stuff and he's super collaborative. So it's been a joy, it's been super awesome. And then we were lucky enough to kind of like be on the team, kind of like re-kickstarted the new, the new project who later on became Overwatch. Yeah. Good. Like when that happens, it's amazing. And, and I apologize, we just went went right into, which is awesome. I appreciate it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> we're just gonna keep going. This is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So, so when when you started, like, did you have a, a, a clear idea what was gonna be? Like, because I, I know you've mentioned like his work is awesome and the style definitely comes through. But was that something that for you was a conscious decision? It was like, you know, this style is what I what I like, or did it kind of evolve with you, like with with your skills? Um, so the good thing about that is that. Arne and I had been like working on uh, Project Titan for already like four years, four oh. years and a half by the time, like four years, I think, together. So we already had like that relationship of like me slowly starting to understand, you know, like how to translate his style and like kind of like we were starting to really uh, speak the same language. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think that that's something really, really interesting and powerful when, when you have like a concept artist and a 3D modeler who like spend a lot of time together and like work together and like, and, and you kind of like end up like actually developing a style together, which is, which is super cool and rare. Yeah. Um, so whenever we came, I mean, we, we started like the, the new project. First of all, we had to do like three pitches, right? It's not like we went straight to Overwatch. Uh, the company basically gave us like six weeks and we had like mm -hmm. two weeks per, per pitch and we're like, oh my God, okay. So I think that there was a pitch for like StarCraft stuff. There was mm -hmm. another um, original IP and then people were like, dude, can we... Oh, you crashed right there. You froze. Oh no. Let's see if Bruno's going to come back in a second. Are you guys still watching this? Let me know in the comments. Like, how is it? Let me see if I can text him. But yeah, guys, Bruno is the lead uh, character artist in, uh, in Overwatch. So we're just kind of, uh... oh, there he is. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I, I was connected to like a different network <laughs> on me. So I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> uh, no worries, no worries. You were saying just, yeah, the click with the concept artist when that happens. And you guys did some pitches. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. We did some pitches and, and everything. And then there was just like, 
from like the all the whole art team were like dude like we spent so much time on the previous project and like is there something that we could do that would at least like kind of like grab a little bit of the essence of what we developed as a style you know into the, the new project so like the art team at least was really focused on that specific project just because we had like so much history already even though like we didn't necessarily grab every single same concept or anything like that at least there was like a relationship that had mm -hmm. already been established between the original style and like everything that we've been working on so we pushed for it definitely we definitely do did our due diligence on the other pitches and everything and definitely contributed but like i remember um kind of like also kind of like pushing and saying oh man like i i really hope that we're gonna get that one and then um, it was kind of like, yeah, like, and everybody, the thing that we didn't realize at the time, or at least I didn't realize at the time is that everybody had kind of like the same feeling regarding that project where like everybody would just wanted to do that because it was so, so pure, so clean, so, um, so straightforward. Right. And, um, and that was kind of like capturing lighting in a bottle in a way that like, you know, um, everybody was on the same page. I have never seen that ever. Like that was my first time ever. Uh, that I, I've been part of a production pre, pre pro, pro and post production where literally everybody in the meeting, there was no argumentation, like, like no arguing and stuff like that. Can you even imagine? Like, that's the thing, you know, like I was actually writing that on like a Facebook post not so long ago. It's like, that's literally the thing that like, when you're like teaching, the teacher tells you, this is never going to be that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Get real guys. Like this, is, this is the real world here. And we got that for Overwatch and that was really something special. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so, so, um, did the, the style evolve to kind of like go back to your original question? Um, it did, it definitely did. I, I think that just being able to kind of like sit down with, with Arnold and, 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 and Bill Petras, uh, who's our, our director as well, and, and kind of like dive into uh, the style and what we wanted to do with that, like allowed me and, and all of us actually, even on like on the animation, rigging, you know, like environment, like everybody kind of like sat down and say, okay. Here's what we like about the old style, and here's where we want to go with it. Um, so there was definitely a little bit of that during the production, and mm -hmm. um, it was super, super awesome because we had uh, carte blanche. Like we really, we could actually go for it, like for a limited amount of time, right? <laughs> the time box it really well. It's like, yeah, hey, yeah. this is it. You just play yeah. in this. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it was awesome. It was really cool. Like it, it yeah, definitely it comes like a dream. It definitely comes true. Like, especially when you see the stuff that you guys are doing with the characters, like from, from early on, like the, if I could say the original cast as you guys kind of expanded after that, right. it definitely yeah. had a, a a feeling of like different games, but like, it's almost like, yeah, if you put a group of t really talented people together, you know, with Blizzard behind it, like this is kind of what you expect to come, come out of it. So definitely, it definitely had the, had the feeling of like, oh yeah, these guys are having fun from, from the beginning yeah. of just creating all these characters. Totally. And I think that you touched on like something super important, actually, is like you said, Blizzard was behind us. And which is another thing that I'd never seen in another company where when you crash and burn on a project that big, and trust me, we were really burned. Mm -hmm. uh, like yeah. it, it's insane to still have people at the top, not shutting down everything, like literally dispatching all of the people, like and making sure that they're like, they're finding like safe harbor and like f f keeping a skeleton team and say, Hey guys, we still believe in you. Let's do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like we're that we're going to time box this a little bit more, but like, here's, uh, you know, like we were just extending our trust. Like you guys got this, we're behind you and we're, we're, we'll just back you all the way. And I, yeah. And I, I don't know, like, I feel like I, I, I got like really spoiled by the experience because I, I have been part of like other companies where like when the project fails, that basically the only thing that kind of like ties the two sides together. And when that thing fails, everything else fails. So that I, yeah, that was insane. That was super, we, super we, awesome. I mean, we went through a similar, similar thing with, uh, at Sony, right? Like we, like I came in a little late on the project that got canceled. And uh, we kind of went through. So I, I, I imagine how it was for you guys. But sometimes that, that's good, right? Like you kind of, uh, not that it happens with you guys, but usually when a project got canceled, like it happened a little bit with us, but it kind of cleared the house a little bit. Like some people, they're frustrated. <laughs> yeah. Like they'll, you know, they'll go do something else. The people who want to stay are the ones that definitely want to make something, right? So you kind of, just kind of that fresh start. And, and, you know, we both work on this for, for a long time. And that those things happen. You just have to make the best out of it. And that's usually when the company will come back with even more trust because the people who stay is, you know, there's that kind of switch of like, okay, now it's time to make something real. And, you know, and everybody who's here wants to do it. And 
if not, like people often leave. And that's because, you know, like it's probably the same thing at Blizzard. It's really hard to like to make people leave in a way, to fire people in a sense like we, you don't hear a lot of that in the game industry that people are getting fired or whatever. It's just more, if people don't are not happy to be there, they'll just go do something else because there's so much out there. So usually that's a good thing that happens. Yeah, absolutely. I think that the, the only difference I would say, and again, I'm not sure exactly if Santa Monica, uh, your studio is actually working on multiple projects at the same time. But like, I think that one of the main advantages of like working at a company like Blizzard is that it's almost like you're part of like a campus that's being made, composed of like many companies, right? Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. people can like, hey, I don't want to work on this. Maybe I'm gonna go to like an incubation project, or like maybe I'm gonna go to work on Diablo, or mm-hmm. like, or like you know, like. Um, starcraft or warcraft or like you know like there's so much there that you can still be part of like the same family and still find something that just appeals to you a little bit better um and also when you know like pardon my french but when uh, shit hits the fan you know like 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 it's kind of really cool to still have something more like you're kind of like dispatching people into other teams while they're kind of like trying to figure out what they really want and sometimes it works you know, like I've, I've, I have like countless of examples of like people that like joined teams where they were like, why did you choose me to join that team? Like, I didn't think that I had it in me. And then they discover something and they're like, oh my God, I'm actually learning something new that I actually was either not interested or thought I couldn't do. And I'm actually really digging this. And I think that, that that's one of the strengths at Blizzard is that you can actually allow people to do that. And then if after that, they really don't want to be there around anymore, you know, it's fine. Like that's, yeah. that's totally okay. Yeah. Oh, so, no, for sure, for sure. So, so how how did you actually build a team? Like, how was that? How many how many artists to begin with, and how how did you get to that point? Um. So I believe that we were. Uh, so we started the team like the ver- the first six months. I would say was forty nine people total. And I think that the strike of genius that uh, the execs actually or like whoever made that decision decided to do is that. 75% of the team was basically uh, game designer, engineers, like everything but artists, mm-hmm. right? Like really trying to kind of like focus on like, let's make a great game. Let's make like really like the core of the game really fun and really hiring people that would like revamp the engine and all that kind of stuff. Really make sure that at least the foundations of everything are really good. You know, you can always build, uh, like like make it pretty later, basically. Mm-hmm. When it comes to um, to the, do the art department, it was basically f- uh, roughly one person per discipline. So I was in charge of the characters, basically. Uh, on was in charge of the concept of the characters. We had a little bit of help at the very, very beginning when we were, were like pitching. Like we, we kind of like borrowed a couple of uh, uh, concept artists from like around the, the company because mm-hmm. we, we wanted to kind of like present a better pitch. But beside that, it was roughly one one person per department. And I think that environment got lucky and they got two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they were supposed to create the world. So, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. And we did that for like six months, you know, to kind of like get our feet wet and everything. And then after six months, we started like very little by little. Um, first of all, reaching out to um, people that used to be on the Project Titan on, on what we call Team 4. That's the, the number of the team that we're on. The, the team Overwatch is uh, basically uh, codenamed Team 4 at Blizzard. And, and kind of like reaching out. And that's how we, we got like Kyle Ra, who's uh, or basically the guy in charge of like the weapons for, for Overwatch. Uh, and then we got like uh, Matt Taylor, who is like a super awesome uh, senior uh, character artist on our team. And like we kind of like started to kind of like bring back a couple of people. And then we hired like the first hire was actually not uh, in house it was like actually from outside we we got a a guy named hi fan that some of you guys might might know like a super super awesome dude um really also helped us out a lot on like developing the style and everything so it was really like very well chosen very surgical picks we like the last thing that we, we wanted to do and i think that this is still something that we apply to this day is that we don't want the team to blow up Absolutely not. Like there is, I think that I really truly believe that regardless of the project that you're making, the smaller the team, within reason, um, mm-hmm. the better it is because you get more interaction. And I think that that's the thing that actually allowed us to actually ship the project that we that we shipped is because we had like I knew the name of everybody, right? Like I wasn't like in a super open space floor where like literally three rows down, like I don't even know the name of the guy, right? Like I knew everybody that, by name and, I, and we would talk with everybody else and everything. So it was more like a family, really. Like that that's really what it felt like. It was like a really big ass family, but it was a family. So 
So that's how, yeah, to answer your question, we really developed that like bits by bits, very surgically picking employees. Uh, and yeah, that's it. It's, it's kind of hard or very rare to see it these days, right? Because the games are getting so big and the teams are getting so big. Like even, you know, I, I am guilty of that, of like, it's just too big. It's just like, you know, and you have to start doing outsourcing. And I know you guys do a little bit of outsourcing, but... We do a lot, guys, dude. We do yeah. a lot. A lot of outsourcing, like, yeah. On the character side as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we reach a point where, you know, like we are uh, making two games, right? Like we're supporting mm -hmm. Overwatch 1, we're making Overwatch 2. So... Uh, at some point we're like hey and 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 i think that, that that comes also like in like our hiring process as well and everything that is there is that to work i think on on a game team like this it's not just enough to be a great artist you just need to be you also need to be a great game developer and really contributes to the, to the project to more than just making cool art yep. and and all of the guys that we have like are either on the path to get there or are already doing it like everybody contributes to more than just like pushing polygons and like drawing pixels right like which is like the core Obviously, it's super duper important uh, for those guys to really nail that, but there's just so much more. So when we started to realize that uh, we reached a point where like most of the cosmetics for the games are actually being outsourced because we're partnering up with like amazing vendors. And, and the cool thing, and I'm not sure, I would be actually really curious to hear uh, what you have to say about that for uh, your experience with uh, Santa Monica is that because we partner up with those uh, few companies very early on, in the in the process, I think that like Overwatch literally kickstarted what became like the outsourcing pipeline at Blizzard. Like before mm -hmm. that, there was like virtually no outsourcing whatsoever in uh, side of the what we were doing in house. And um, but because we did that, and because you know like those companies like were composed of like people that we knew by name and everything, we started to actually invite them at BlizzCon. We started to show them like they would come like once a year, so they were part of the family. And, and that makes it for like a way better uh, and stronger relationship. You know, like people like Rapcat or like or like Airborne Studios and all those guys are like super, super, like they own Overwatch as much as we do to some extent because of like the amount of contribution that they gave us and also um, the amount of feedback that we got from them because obviously you need to share tools and all that kind of good stuff. So you yeah. get a lot of feedback from those guys, which makes you like just a better developer as well. So yep. how is it for you guys? I mean, it's always a, an evolving experience, right? Like dealing, as, I think the technology is evolving so so fast and and you have to, you know, keep up with it. And outsourcing is definitely a way for us to, you know, still have a life or still ship the, <laughs> the games that we, that we are, you know, set ourselves up to do. And it has to be a big part of it. So we have, you know, we have co-developers, which is like a bigger studio that's like sister studios that work with a lot closer to us, uh, where it's almost, you know, they're a little bit different than outsourcing where you kind of, pick the artist and you work with, uh, you know, X amount of people, or you just send a kind of a batch of things like these are more, they're developing the game with us, but we have a lot of outsourcing as well, like asset base outsourcing where kind of, uh, you know, you just have a prop or something and we send it out. Like that's usually that you know, we have tons of that because there's way too many, way too many. I understand, things to do, but, I understand that. But, You're telling me that you guys are still like kind of like trying to keep as much like the sculpting in house as possible, right? Is that still yeah, co yeah. correct? Or are you guys still, also, are you guys starting to outsource that as well? I've, you know, we tried a lot of things. Sculpting is one of those things that it, it needs a lot of, a lot of overseeing, like a lot of feedback. And if usually when you send it out, if it, if it's something important, you often, often get more rounds than they need it, you know? So we rather keep those in house and, and outsource the low res as much as we can to keep the scene because we we i mean we start hiring more people now but the team was for the last project was was basically built on senior artists so we didn't have any any juniors so you know the more we could keep the sculpting for those guys like the the better the quality at the end would be right like if those guys because we did a, almost all the the low poly in-house last project and the quality for some of the things that we were sending out, it's kind of the same, if not better, from the outsourcing because those guys would actually take the time and deliver to you know to the specs. Where sometimes right. internally, those senior guys just want to just get it done, you know. So yeah, I know absolutely. I totally so we, that, that. that's something that worked for us, yeah. But it is kind of something that's always evolving. Yeah. What What do you guys? Or I guess what do you look for when hiring people? Like when you're doing more of the internal hiring? Is um, that something? Uh, 
Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, we have a whole process, right? Uh, which um, we're trying to streamline a little bit, but I think that like there's just like a core component about just the fact that, like I, I mentioned earlier, we just don't want to grow the team too much. So whenever we have a candidate, um, there's a lot of discussions happening around that candidate. And like, the thing is, there's like there's 99% of chance that if you get to talk to somebody at Blizzard and like you start like an interview process, Art is not going to be actually part of this discussion too, too much, especially because usually there's an art test involved or something like that, right? So if we start to kind of like go and we move past that, then like art should not even be a question. And at that point, it's really kind of like trying to understand where the person um, is in terms of like differences like in terms of like difference between being like a great artist and a game de great developer and seeing if that that person is also a good culture fit like that's super important yeah. super 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 important so we'll have a lot of discussions about like like we'll, we'll actually spend sometimes more time geeking out with the person than actually talking too much about like tech like we will definitely talk about pipeline and all that kind of stuff but there's always going to be a moment in in the interview where we will want to actually have fun with the candidate and kind of like geek out because if we cannot have that, then then we know that it's going to be probably a little hard to potentially work with that person, yeah. right? Like there, there's definitely a good component on that and like seeing like what kind of games they are playing and everything. And it's not like everybody needs to actually play games, right? Like it's not like we're not like, uh, like oh, you need to play Blizzard games to actually work at Blizzard. That's not about that. It's about like just like at least kind of like cultivating a little bit of a passion because that's definitely what drives us as human beings like in this industry mostly. Yep. Right. At least on the artist level, I feel like there's a lot of passion for whatever you're passionate about, and um, and we, if we don't feel that essence and like that 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 willingness to communicate about that, uh, then we can sort of like draw like a bridge between that and like the fact that like we might have some communication problems with that person, right? Mm -hmm. Like that person might not be able to contribute that to his or her full potential on the team. And, um, and then, so that, that might be like a little bit of a making or break, depending on like how serious that, that, that aspect of the interview is. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, beside that dude, like it's, it's, it's basically that, like we're trying to put like the, the candidate in front of like, uh, as many disciplines as we can as well, like not like overwhelm the candidate with like people, but at least making sure that like that people, that person would be able to work with like engineer, like, you know, tech art, animation concept and all that kind of stuff. Because if there is one thing that we don't do, at least on Team 4, is that we, we just hate the concept of like being fire and forget, right? Like where like that person is just in its corner, his mm -hmm. or her corner, and then they just do what they are supposed to do. Like we, we just don't care. Yeah, no, that, that, that is, you guys? it is very similar, right? What you said is it's so key, like the culture fit is like one of the biggest things I, I feel like because... When the, when you bring someone for an interview, like more often the portfolio is already there, like the person is is ready, you know. Or if not, you know, there's enough there that you can kind of you know guide them in a way that you get the job done. But yeah, the culture fit is something that's huge, and I, I don't think people realize or or you don't hear you know us talking much about that on on you know online and stuff. Which is yeah, like if you if you want something right, you have to love it. You have to make sure you can work with a with a team that you admire their work. You want to be there. So all that stuff is it's a huge, uh, you know, it's a hu huge point in favor because more often if people just go there and be like, oh yeah, because I you know I like the games that you guys make and like yeah, you know it's not going to be a, a fit. So it's yeah, a and it can start with that. You know, like I don't mind people. Like I mean, I think it's a plus, right? But like knowing that, like like you said, it kind of like goes a little bit beyond that. And like even like I've had people like just coming to me and it's like, hey, I just want to learn. Like you guys are awesome. Like I really love Blizzard and, and Overwatch and everything. I don't play too too much Overwatch, but the art style is super cool. And like and then mm -hmm. and then those those like and then that person thinks that they are actually like they're like, oh my god, I'm like fucking this up or whatever. But no, you not because you're actually showing me passion here and yeah. you're showing me that you can actually clearly communicate about like what you want and don't want and that that's that's key that's really key yeah yeah do you, yeah, do, do you have any, any uh any sort of uh early documentation to get people up to speed on the style i i think i've seen oh, some of like the, the oh, yeah. of like the overwatch style i think i've seen some of those i i i mean it's super weird because a lot of people don't like writing documentation. I am a big sucker for documentation. I actually enjoy this to a core level you can't even imagine. That's why you um, are. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to geek out about it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. There is something. So here's the thing I like about documentation. 
it's not about like writing words on a piece of paper. It's just that for me, it is a way to actually fully, fully understand what I'm doing. Like, like really understand the how, but more importantly, the why, right? Like when I can break down the way that we do hair or like the way that I sculpt the face or something like that in like four or five pillars that I can literally give a post-it to people and put that on their monitor and say, if you check those five boxes with your uh, skill and everything, you got it. You, you, it's it's amazing. It's such an amazing, it's such a powerful thing, right? Like I'm, I'm a big sucker about like, whenever I'm gonna do um, a paint over or like, or like something or like explain something and, um, um, yeah, I mean, Paul, like if anybody like from the team listens to that, I'm sorry because I know that I'm taking long, a long time whenever I, I, I explain you guys something. But like, I think that there is something really important about like just just going a little bit more lengthy and like explaining like, hey, this is why I'm doing this. And like, this is where where it's coming from. Like another thing that I that's another tip for me. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm making like a small tangent here, but it's still part of like how to really? teach somebody uh, something is that um, I am not shy about like talking about my inspirations. Um, because if you know where I'm coming from, I, first of all, my feedback is going to make sense. And on top of that, after like a few times of like hearing what I'm saying and like telling you, oh, this is my love letter to Disney. Or like, I'm, I really like a Landaker for like falls and all that kind of good stuff. Right. Like, and when you start to kind of like, uh, understand that and uh, plus the core principle, like, like the next time I'm going to go to your desk or review something, I'm going to be like, wow, I would have done exactly the same. And, you know, like, oh, and you filled that gap with like something that I would have totally filled that gap with because you went like kind of like past me, like in a way, I'm, I'm just like a voice that kind of like speaks through like all of my inspirations in a way. And I'm tr- and I try to kind of like put that into my own style and like, but like if you if you have that, right, like, for instance, like I, I like I'm going to tell you a story, right, about that, like when it clicked for me, you know, Rich Diamond, right? I'm mm-hmm. sure you do, right? Like a uh, guy that you used to work at, at Naughty Dog and everything. And he used to be the lead on uh, on Titan. And and what happened is that one day I was geeking out with the guy and uh, obviously he came with like a different background, was kind of like revamping a little bit of style and everything. But I was like, okay, like we were geeking out and he was like talk, sharing with me like that, like he loves... Uh, a couple of uh, like a couple of anatomy books by this guy called Philip Farrow, who's a French dude. We probably all have their his books and everything. Yeah. But that was my first time hearing about that, right? Like it was like in 2000, I don't know, like maybe 11 or something like that. Whatever. Mm-hmm. The next day, I literally bought those books, and mm-hmm. then I I started to actually study those books and everything. And then literally within two months, dude, the guy would come to my desk and would be like, "This is awesome. Okay, this is great." <laughs> and <laughs> And I, I just clicked, and I was like, "This is what you need to do when when you ta- when you when uh, when you try to kind of like teach and mentor and like just like you know like um, propagate information to somebody else is that on top of the documentation you really need to kind of like tell them where you're coming from. So it's part of the whole package. Yeah. Um, and hopefully write that down. And so yeah, I'm really big into documentation. I'm sorry, I'm I'm talking too much here, but this like is, no, this, this is, is a very passionate. I'm very passionate about that topic. So this is exactly what Which I want to get out. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. I mean, it is. The more you uh, you work in project, different projects, and the more you get involved in teams, the more you know that's important. Like you can, especially if you're growing your team, like you cannot, you know, kind of preserve the same style or teach people to the same speed of like a small team. So you definitely need documentation and not just that but like it's, it, at one point it just starts to get tasking like you can't really keep up with everything so i feel you like you know yeah. the more documentation like especially for people who are starting the the better the reason i ask because i did i i don't remember exactly when i saw the like i think i was already at sony and we were working i was at vsg which is a, a studio down in san diego and we were working on a project that had a similar style um and I think someone bring brought to me was like, yo, take a look at this kind of PDF. And it was like nice. how to model how to model characters Overwatch style. That's <laughs> cool. On. That's cool. We we talked about it. Like, I mean, I, I think that if you combine all the talks that has been happening between Bill Petras, Arnold Sang, I think that uh, also uh, Shannon Thomas actually did one at Nomon like years ago, where he was kind of like sharing a little bit of like what we kind of like shared with them in terms of style and everything. Uh, or maybe you just got the actual PDF and good for you. <laughs> 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 Those things won't go around very easily. Right. No, totally. Um, so that was actually put together more like by, I would say, Arnold Sang. And like, so what they would do is that they would talk to us, right? About like, hey, 
what is the things that we were paying attention when it comes to characters and stuff like that. And then we, we would all talk about, about that. And then they were kind of like putting that together. Uh, and then what I did personally is that I wrote like all, most of the documentation, at least for Overwatch 1, most of the documentation for uh, the pipeline and everything. Like the modeling style and like like tutorials about hair and folds and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and then um, the cool thing that happened with Overwatch 2 is that obviously we had the opportunity to evolve the pipeline quite a bit actually, which was super awesome. And that was like a really good opportunity for, for me to kind of like share that with other people. So mm -hmm. now we have like documentation that are actually being written like by more than one person, but it still feels like it's exactly the same duck coming from like the same uh, mindset, which is, which is awesome. It's still the same vision. So yeah, yeah. it's very exciting. So how, how, I guess, um, I don't know, I didn't ask this, but is the team mostly from of senior people or do you guys actually hire like, uh, I guess staff or, or interns or juniors? Right, right, right. Uh, that's a very good uh, question, actually. We have a, a healthy mix of both, I would say. Like, I think that, like, for a while, we were very senior. I would say, like, at the very inception of, like, each project, it is just, like, sometimes, like, a better idea to actually have, like, slightly more senior people. So you don't have to actually understand the game that you're making on top of teaching other people. Mm -hmm. But once you start to get the ball rolling, then you start to bring, like, slightly more junior people, knowing that you're going to have time for them. Because it's a matter of time, right? It's a matter of like allocation time. Like if I'm like spending literally like 90% of my time figuring out R&D and writing pi and like talking about pipeline and stuff like that, and then you are still figuring out how to model something for Overwatch, it's going to feel pretty shitty if I can't really be there for you to help you. And obviously we have like a lot of people, right? Like I'm not the only one mentoring, like every single artist actually mentor each other which is also something really cool but like it's just that sometimes at the beginning at the inception of a project it just gets a little trickier to to do that now we reach the point where obviously we can bring like more junior artists we have like we have um, a couple of like junior artists or like more like staff artists that, that joined us not so long ago and and it's awesome because you get back into that thing where you see them actually tackling something for the first mm -hmm. time and clicking mm -hmm. and you're like yes this is it this is it like you got it you absolutely got it. So there's something powerful about that as well. And the, the passion too. Like every time we get a new artist, like young, it's just like, oh, all right, dude. So just good. remind yourself, like, okay, here's why, we, why we're doing this. Dude, like, yeah. I saw you because whenever senior guys are like too much amongst each other, like, huh, I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to work on this anymore. I don't know. Like, it's kind of like me. And then you get like that, that young artist was like, oh my God, this is the best thing in the world. And you're like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with you. It's like the best feeling. It's like, give it to me. And then all of a sudden, yeah. the senior guys is like, no, I'm going to do this. Do this tomorrow. You know? actually, I remember how good it was to actually do this. All right, it let's go. Good. Yeah. You know, but yeah, no, it's a natural process. I think that there's also really something really cool about like seeing a person going from like just wanting to prove themselves through their art to actually naturally kind of like starting to ask more tasks that are like a little bit more like hey man i just want to kind of like be a little bit more in charge of this or like mm -hmm. or like like i feel like i could actually uh impact the project in like a better way if i were like a kind of like in, in charge of like that small project or like can i can i help develop the pipeline for that feature something yeah. like that so that that's something also that's like first of all you're like thank god i'm not the only one doing this uh, <laughs> uh and and on top of that you, you you can you can you can just like it's such a great teaching moment for them as well so yeah i really yeah. like it and i can do art while they're doing that, which is great. Well, that's another question I have because, yeah, <laughs> art, I know it, it is something that is hard to balance it out. Your time with, you know, lead it, the, the lead role and then still making art. Yeah. And even now going, like, I'm, I'm art directing now, it's even more harder than before. But, like, how is I it can't for even you? I mean, I, I can't imagine because I, I talk with um, Arn and, and, you know, and Billy about that from time to time. And it, it's, it's definitely a different type of jo job for sure. Yeah. Um, I had my moments. I had my moments of doubt for sure. Um, to the point of like, at some point, um, like, like, you know, a year and a half ago, I almost like demoted myself from like mm -hmm. being the lead on the team because I was like, man, I'm, I'm reaching a tipping point where I didn't know how to express this for myself. Like I was like, I, I don't think I want to be lead or like, I don't know if I want to be lead anymore. I, I want to actually do art and just art. And then again, Blizzard, absolutely fantastic company. They allowed me to actually give it a shot. And it's like, okay, you know what? Like, you want to kind of like go back to being like a single uh, contributor, just do it, right? And then and then I did my first asset and it was super awesome and everything. And then the second asset, you're like, wait, I'm actually missing so much of like the other stuff. Like it's cool to create and everything, but like 
there's just a connection with the game that I just don't have anymore. Yep. And and I, I feel like it's just not enough. And I, and, and I, I'll be always thankful for them to actually allow me to actually understand that by like going back into the trenches, you know, like kind of like beating the dust one more time and, and kind of like understand that like I, I wanted more out of that job. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of like went back into that role uh, shortly after. And now I'm, I'm just working with production to basically have a healthy mix of being what I would consider being like a working lead, meaning that I, I still enjoy making assets. I still enjoy pushing the boundaries. Uh, when I, like I got so excited whenever we got into Overwatch 2 and and this slightly opened the door for me to kind of like, okay, we can revamp. The, I was already through the door, you know? <laughs> it's like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> uh, and... Um, so that was really cool that was really cool and again that was like made like within like like you know like a time frame and like within the boundaries that we are allowed to but like there was something really cool about being back there and like doing r d and all that kind of good stuff which is by far the thing that i like the most mm-hmm. uh, i really love creating pipelines that that's something i absolutely adore and like setting up style and all that kind of good stuff and, and creating assets that will lead to that and that's a question that i wanted to ask you actually because like you're obviously working on like on like an IP, you know, like like what I'm doing, what we just did with Overwatch 2, like had been done with Kratos so many times, right? And then you guys had to kind of like take over that next situation. Mm-hmm. And I was really curious to like what was the what was the mindset when we got you guys took on that responsibility to actually get there? 